Okay, time for session number nine. I'm not doing a live class today because uh, it's a waste of time. Uh, nobody comes, nobody asks any questions, so there's no point in me doing it uh, live. As a matter of fact, after tomorrow, I'm not going to be doing any more. I'm, well, I might do one a week, maybe, if there's uh, enough people asking. But these last few days, the um, reception has been quite poor. The initial video has over a thousand views. Then day two, three, four, five, the last two or three have a hundred or so. The first one had over a thousand views. Uh, whereas the last two or three, I say virtually no one has been watching them. So uh, this obviously indicates that uh, you're not interested or that you don't require your letters assessing. So let that be the case. I won't be wasting my time on you anymore after tomorrow. So that being said, I'm going to, I only had three letters. I just have a quick look in the group. There's three letters. I'm going to quickly review them now. So, uh, Mrs. Mary Clark. Okay, okay, okay. Right now, if you if you put the D O B, you wouldn't need to put that. And who cares that she's an office clerk? So, if you put the D O B, blah 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 blah. What nineteen fifty something? Then you well no, nineteen sixty something. Well, D O B. Then you don't have to include this because who cares if she's an office clerk or not? Whose features are suggestive? So, what do you want me to do? And why do we have my favorite sentence? Again, highly appreciated by whom? By Mrs. Clark, by you. Who's gonna highly appreciate this? Okay. Why don't you just put it in the reason for writing? I'm writing to request your further assistance, your further assessment of Mrs. Clark, whose features are blah, blah, blah. Why not do it like that? Mrs. Clark is married and lives with husband and son, what, as opposed to living with somebody else's husband and uh, son? Again, uh, irrelevant. What does that have to do? Unless it's pertinent, don't include it. And I'd put something like, regarding a social and medical history, you know. So every paragraph has an introductory uh, phrase, which helps the logical flow of the uh, letter. She's been heavy smoker for 30 years. Now, that is relevant. Okay. Her, her, her mother died. She didn't have a diet. Uh, at the age of 66, she was a carcinoma. Okay. So then Mrs. Clark presented with a complaint of a non-productive cough or non-productive coughing, which had been present for seven weeks. That complaint was associated with mouth shortness of breath, not breathing, especially at night. And a strange sensation uh, like heaviness in her chest. Salt, salt, no idea what that means. I, I, I don't know if you mean apart from this. She denied the presence of fever. Now, she didn't deny anything. She didn't say, no, no, I don't have fever. Don't make me say I have fever. A denial is when somebody says that something is not correct or true. So she's not going to say, no, I didn't have fever. She, you asked her, did you have a fever or night sweat? And she said, she said, no, which is not a denial in that sense. It's just a confirmation. Okay. Uh, apart from this, there was no presence of, of fever. Night uh, sweets. Uh, well, maybe she does eat sweets at night. Sweats could possibly be the right uh, word. Furthermore, that she has been a tolerated exercise. Uh, no idea what that means. What she has been able to tolerate exercise or she has been doing ex exercise that is meaningless. Uh, do shopping, do the shopping or go shopping and to walk up two flights of stairs. It's a flight of stairs, two flights of stairs. Not, uh, not sure what that relevance. Um, so a part, you know, right. Don't drop in, in information unless you're going to connect it to something, you know? So she says, right. 
I've had a cough for seven weeks. I've got shortness of, of breath, a bit of a heavy feeling, but I, I don't have a fever or anything. Oh, and by the way, I can do exercise and walk up two flights of stairs. Where does that come from? What does that mean? What's the relevance or pertinence? Don't drop in information without some kind of link to the rest of the paragraph. Her examination was unremarkable, except having sex consolation, with monophobic wheeze, a monophobic wheeze, a monophonic wheezing in the mother of a chest, uh, a chest x ray, and CT reveal. Based above my diagnosis, for about biopsy medicine might be required. Okay, okay. So that's not bad. Um, I didn't check the word count, but it looks a little bit short to me. Let me have a look and see. Let me have a look and see. 193. No, that's okay. That's okay then. So that's not bad, not so bad. Uh, moving on. Uh, you've got the DOB, so we don't need that. And who cares that she's a sales assistant? What's that got to do with anything? The occupation is only pertinent in some letters. For example, uh, I think it's, uh, was it Mr. McDonald or someone? No, there's another guy who's a landscaper. You know, he's a gardener. He's a landscape gardener. And his occupation is pertinent because he's injured his knee and there's lots of material in the case notes about he's worried about work because he's the only wage earner, he's a landscaper. So the occupation is pertinent then, but in most of the other letters it's not, really. And my favourite bullshit sentence that means absolutely nothing. Your further management will be highly appreciated. By whom would it be appreciated? Now, if you watch E2 and swoosh, seeing as you don't believe a word that I say. Any, have you seen this sentence in any of the videos that Jay or anybody from uh, swoosh do? Any of their examples? Have you seen this? Because I haven't. If you have, send me a link because I want to see them using this. Okay? So, uh, I'm writing to request your further management and assessment of blah, blah, blah. That's better. Uh, initially presented after passing out last night while she was at a pub. Well, that happens to me every night. Well, no, no, sorry. Apart from vomiting one time, she had the symptoms of examination of Buster's sick leave was given. Why is that passive? Who gave it to her? Who gave it? You, you did. Uh, her examination of were on... Remarkable thus, what well, I advised her to rest and gave her a note for sick leave. That would work better. Later on, she presented with different medical issues which were treated accordingly. Well, if you're not going to tell us what they are, that's kind of, of pointless, including that sentence. Oh, by the way, she presented with some totally different uh, things, which I'm not going to tell you anything about. So why even mention it? On the 22nd, she came complaining of between stress leading to depression, and it sounds like both libido, libid, not a lipido, and appetite. So Cyprus was advised, why is this very short sentence? Why would you put that right? Someone was just asking me about short sentences. You know, you are supposed to include a mixture of sentence types. But as I mentioned before in previous analyses, that um, including use of passive, yes, when appropriate, you don't put things in just to show the examiner, look, I can use passive, look, I can use a short sentence. If it's not appropriate, it sticks out a mile. It looks forced, not natural. So why would you put this? Why wouldn't this be part of the previous uh, a sentence? If I were writing this sentence, I would not write that short sentence. I wouldn't. I would make it part of the previous sentence. And why is it passive? Again, I keep saying, you know, you know, you right, you use passive, yes, but only when appropriate. If you perform some action. Now, you know, one of the reasons to use passive is to put the um, important information, the object, usually the patient at the beginning of the sentence. Okay, but here, there's no import, you know, in this sentence, the patient is not in it. So, she, you know, 
If you want to put her, the important person, the object, you put it at the beginning. However, she's not in this particular sentence, so you can use active. Therefore, I prescribed to Miss Avam and offered to refer Miss Hoffman to a, a psychiatrist, which she refused. That would work better. That's how I would do it. On today's visit, Miss Hoffman agreed to be referred to a psychiatrist. Please note she did not take the prescribed drug or prescription. It's worth mentioning. And why is this worth mentioning? And why is it worth mentioning here? What does this have to do with anything? Now, if you wanted to mention, you know, she's like social, socially isolated, depression, then you'd have to put this before, you know, because, right, as I keep saying, you're telling a story, constructing a narrative, right? So, you know, uh, I remember the case notes here, the several visits, blah, 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 and over the course of them, you can see depressive things are occurring, this happened, that happened, she splits with a boyfriend, she's got, you know, so that is pertinent only if it's logically sequenced, you know, to show the chronology and show how one event leads to another. Simply dropping that in. And why is it worth mentioning? Why? Uh, and so if you have to include it, why would you put it there? In any case, it makes no sense. Okay, so you've got to be careful. You've got to be very careful. Okay, let's take a look at this uh, final one. Aged eight. It's either aged eight years old or aged eight. Uh, I'm wanting to refer Amina. Who is it? Right, right. So why don't you simply say, I'm writing now, the new criteria in August of purpose, right? I mentioned this on several occasions. Get to the point. I'm writing to request the urgent hospitalization of Amina, who is demonstrating features of blah, blah, blah. Do it like that. Okay? You don't need two sentences. The the reader wants to know, what do you want me to do? Why am I reading this? Do it in one sentence. I'm writing to request, ur ooh, urgent, right, urgent hospitalization of Amina, who has features of blah, blah, blah. Crystal clear. Okay, that's what I would do. Uh, for the further investigation, you don't need an article in front of further investigation. Initially, let me see, she's eight. So, an eight-year-old girl comes to see you on her own. Hello, doctor. My name's Amina, and I've got viral infection. Nonsense. She came with her mother, and her mother, as the case with most children, did all the talking. Okay, that's usually how it, how it works. So, make it clear. Amina and her mother, or Amina was brought to me by her mother, as she was down, you know, with etc. Uh, hence, that should be C. Manage conservatively. No idea what that means. And why is it a separate sentence? So, Amina came to see me, eight years old, on her own. And she says, Hello, doctor. I've got viral infection. So, you managed her conservatively. I have no idea how, what the that actually means. What? What? Did you do You're right? So usually, when you're doing like a visit, okay, what the patient presents with, what they say, what you found, what you did, that's the logical arrangement, okay. The patient comes, they say, "I've got this, I've got that." You examine, you find, you take action. That's it. That's how it works. So on review appointment, her condition had not improved, not did not, had not improved past perfect at all. Her mother, oh, her mother reported that she was, right, who was coughing? Who was coughing? Dangling, dangling. Your participle is dangling. Who was coughing? Amina or her mother? That's not clear. Make it so. 
and was having continuous headache or a continuous headache or continuous headaches. Upon examination, she was found to be fit. Right, so you need to be clear, right? Who? Is it Amina? Is it her mother? Make it clear. On examination, she had to be fever on the flashback team, relative. relative investigations were ordered, such as what? You ordered some tests, not investigations. Are you a private detective? No, you're not. So, tests, not investigations. Earlier today, Amina presented on her own again, I doubt it, with worsening, with, uh, with, well, right, worsening, with a worsening, worsening of the previous symptoms in addition to vomiting. I would phrase that slightly better but okay uh amina presented with her mother uh who complained or who reported uh amina's symptoms had worsened that's better vital signs of really high temperature high pulse rate of the next difference of positive was evident on the days the temperature was reviewed okay i was Emergency department for the evaluation and treatment. Okay, so the rest of that paragraph's not too bad. But uh, so there's a few things you'd have to have a look at here. You need to be clear who's doing what to whom. Only use passive when appropriate. Um, yeah, I've said all that I need to say about these three. Okay, I'll uh, call it quits for that. So the last one tomorrow. Though, um, given the total lack of interest in the last one or two days, I might not bother. I probably will because I said that I would. However, after that, I'm going to be thinking again about my commitment. So, I hope this helps.